when Frederick invited me to participate in this project, I think my, I had a mixed reaction. One was fascination and the other was trepidation. One of, one of the aspects of this, uh, of this being a group project that I found interesting, was that knowing that there were 11 other photographers working, it freed me to really pursue my own interests and not feel as though I needed to do something uh, encyclopedic to try to cover every aspect which wouldn't be possible anyway. Uh, so I could, so knowing that oh, there would be other voices, I could just pursue my own interests. One of the ways I tried to deal with the complexity of the situation in Israel and the West Bank was to really do three different projects at once. Uh, one with a, uh, a large format camera, mostly landscape, one with a digital camera, which was mostly scenes from everyday life, and one with large format black and white, which related to a series I had done in Israel in the mid-90s of archaeological digs. And by, I thought by having these different voices going on at the same time, that this would in some way communicate uh, the different voices that, that exist there. The, the work of mine in this exhibition is just my uh, large format landscape work, landscape and architectural work. And it in some ways relates to landscape work I had done in the American West. And in some ways is different because the difference comes in that um, I became interested in how the land was built upon, how hilltops were claimed by, by settlements, by Arab villages, how the land was occupied by Bedouins. Uh, so this was, this was a land that's, that's contested that I find personally beautiful. I just have an attraction to the desert. Um, but the, the contesting of the land is in subtle ways visible on the land. Uh, when I photograph, I like to take a block of time and work every day, uh, all day long. And the, the work I did in Israel and the West Bank was uh, six trips over a period of two years. Most of the time, I had one assistant. Uh, and it was, it was fascinating because he knew the country so well. Uh, I felt like he knew every single road, uh, and we developed a very close relationship. If, you know, if I'm spending a month going out all day long for, say, nine hours in a car every day, uh, we do a lot of talking and became very good friends. Uh, and I began to rely on his his really precise knowledge of the country. As I said, I go out and photograph all day long. And if I, if I go out every day for a month or two months, or in this case, almost six months, photographing, I produce a lot of pictures, as I'm sure everyone in the show has done. The show could only have a handful of them. And, uh, and it needed to have a very unified selection, in this case, just a, a small group of the landscape work. But as with most of the photographers in the show, there's a much larger body of work that uh, couldn't be tapped in, in a group show. And for me, the way to, to mine that work is in the form of a book. One of the aesthetic problems that I had to encounter was, how do I see a place with, with fresh eyes, with almost the eyes of, of a tourist, but not take pictures that are tourist pictures, but 
at the same time take pictures that could only be made in this place. In an attempt to avoid tourist pictures, I could see someone taking pictures that were in fact generic, that could be done anywhere. But I didn't want that either. I wanted something that was true to the place, that had some of the essence of a place that can be approached with fresh eyes. And so this became, for me, one of the central aesthetic problems. How to decide what to photograph. 